Black Nuggets, making a game in less than 48 hours is fun. Last weekend, me and one of my best friends, Roy, participated in the GMTK 2022 Game Jam. It's probably the biggest online game jam. And if you've never heard of GMTK or Game Maker's Toolkit, go check out Mark Brown's channel because it's stock full of amazing game dev content. And if you don't know what a game jam is, basically it's making a game within 48 hours with a set theme. And I'm very happy to say that we did it. And if I may speak for us, I think we're pretty stoked on the end result. So in this video, I wanted to go over our process and share some tips and tricks that I think are helpful when making game jam games. But before we do so, let's take a look at what we've actually made. Through the Dice Tower is a physics-based puzzle dungeon crawler. You must help the prince who was turned into a dice by an evil game master for cheating escape the different floors of a dice tower. As a player, you can roll or throw the prince to walk and try and make it to the exit. However, the results you roll while walking trigger traps, obstacles and more on the different floors. Is it perfect? Far from. Should there be more content and variety? Definitely. Did we make everything that we came up with? Hell no. But is it finished? Playable? Fun? Hell yeah. So, how do we do it? First, we have to go back a few days to before the jam actually started. As a prep, I set up an empty Unity project. I made a Git repository, installed some packages and got the project working on both of our PCs. Hi everyone. The sixth annual GMTK Game Jam begins now. Your goal over the next 48 hours is to make a game that fits the following theme. Roll of the Dice. After the big theme reveal and kickoff of the jam on Friday, we went straight to the literal drawing board, started doodling, brainstorming and coming up with new ideas to see what sticks. I believe brainstorming is a skill and something that people need to practice. So here are some things that I like to keep in the back of my mind when doing a brainstorm. Remember, at this stage everything is and should be possible. Nothing has been made and nothing is final. It's just a brainstorm. Don't stress about the outcome until the brainstorm is done. Also, don't dismiss any ideas. Ideas can lead to new and better ideas, even if they seem ridiculous or big. If someone comes up with an idea, run with it. See where it goes and mix in your own thoughts. If you don't like an idea, don't say that idea sucks. Try saying cool. But what if we don't get caught on a single idea too fast? As a rule of thumb, I always try and come up with at least three totally different, unrelated, fresh ideas. Luckily, only after an hour we struck gold. We came up with the idea of a dice rolling through a dungeony dice tower, triggering traps with every roll or move that he made. So with an idea in the bank, it was time to actually start making it. Something to keep in mind when making a full game in less than 48 hours is that you have to focus on the absolute basics. It's all about making the minimal amount of features with the minimal amount of complexity. Aim for making a game which you can finish in about 10 hours. Why? You might ask. I have 48 hours. Why would I make a game I can finish in 10? Well, first off, off those 48 hours, you probably also need to sleep, eat, walk the dog, take care of the kids, go to the bathroom, you know, do human things. That would probably mean that all in all about 12 hours of your 48 hours already spent on doing other things than making games. Add to that bug fixing, bug hunting, play testing, creative blocks, watching tutorials, and you might find yourself having less than 30 hours. And what's better, having an unfinished, unplayable game with a lot of features or a finished polished game with only one mechanic and one level. Believe me, things always take more time than expected. So if you scope your game too big, you will probably end up with something that is unfinished. But if you scope your game small and you are finished in a day, well, you have seas of time to put polish in your game and add additional features without stressing. And that's what it's all about, having fun making games, not stressing all weekend trying to finish your game jam game, right? 
If you have to start somewhere, always start a jam with making your main mechanic first and build up everything around that. For our game, that was making a physics-based dice which you could throw around the room. Roy offered himself up to start working on our main mechanic. And luckily, I have also been learning how to program. So I started on what I believe is the second most important thing of making a game, the main game loop. Or in other words, the thing that the player will be doing most to progress through the game. In our case, throwing the dice in the exit and progressing to the next level. And if you look at it that way, that's exactly what a super minimal version of our game would be. You start a level, throw a dice in the exit, and you progress to the next level. And so on, and so on. And so that's what we try to get working first. By the time I made a main menu which could load a blank level, Roy had already finished an amazing first draft of the dice throwing mechanic. Now that we had a dice, I made a simple exit and BAM! Within the first few hours our main game loop was completed. While Roy kept polishing on the dice throwing mechanics, I made our first two traps to make navigating the levels a bit more challenging, and by 2am in the morning, we had a game! Be it a boring game, but we had a game. The next morning, with a first boring version of the game ready, I started making some art. For me, while jamming, modularity and simplicity is key, so we settled on a tile based approach which we felt fitted well with our dungeon esque board gamey vibe. I made some simple tiling walls and floors so we could really quickly build good looking dungeons. Adding some post processing and fog really helped tie it all together quickly. Again, starting small is key here. I only made one door, one floor tile, and one wall tile. Because if we needed more, I could always add more later. And as a small side tension here, well, jamming, it's always important to transcend your own role. Luckily, Roy and I are both solo devs, so we have experience in modeling, animating, programming, making UI, making art, basically everything that goes into making a game. But when you're a team with different roles, it's really difficult not to end up in a situation where an artist has modeled 100 props and there's no one to implement them into the game. And so during lunchtime on the second day, we were in a pretty good spot. Because we had kept the scope small of our game, we had a solid version with two playable levels, some art, some sound, and a scoring system. And now we could spend the rest of our time polishing and adding features to the game to make it even feel better without having to worry to not have a game at all at the end of the jam. And so we added a ton more stuff. We added tutorials, a completely new main character, created four more floors, added in extra camera options, added in better and more art, and we even had time to implement this awesome breaking door feature. This all meant that we could start the third and final day spending time on something that you should make a lot of time for, making builds and submitting the game. Never underestimate this part. You not only have to make builds, but you also have to make screenshots, GIFs, write descriptions, make an itch page, upload your game. It all takes more time than you think. And I don't know about you, but I have never made a build which works the first time. So yeah, keep that in mind. And that is why you should never wait until the last hour to submit your game. Nothing is as stressful as trying to make a build, making an itch page and uploading it while you see the jam clock ticking down. And by the way, most jams nowadays allow you to resubmit and re-upload your game while the clock is still running. So if you can, do so. We started wrapping up making an itch page and making a build. And at this point, we already accomplished what we set out to do. Make and finish a game. But we knew we could do even more without stressing. So we added two more floors, added a ton of props and fixed some camera issues. We then re-uploaded a build and that's how we made through the Dice Tower. If you would like to play it yourself after hearing this story, you can. It's on itch.io and there's a link in the description down below. In the end, it took us about 27 hours, a shit ton of Red Bull, and two nights working until 2 a.m. to finish the game. We actually submitted with five hours left on the clock, and we had a ton more ideas to implement and polish even more, but we just absolutely crashed. What can I say? We're getting old. You want to know what was the hardest thing about making this game? The title screen. 
I think between Roy and me, we actually redid it about four or five times. It just didn't feel good. And there's also my final tip. If something doesn't feel right during development, say something. Speak up. If it's art, sound, coding, it doesn't matter. Don't waste time polishing a turret. Just put it down, go work on something else and come back to it later, or have some fresh eyes look at it. It might feel tough and it might feel rough, but in the end, it will benefit the product. Well, Nuggets, if you have never participated in a game jam, I would highly recommend it, because nothing gets the creative juices flowing as unreasonable deadlines and crushing time limits. In any case, that's all that I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and now, back to our regular programming.